In this video, we're going to discuss how to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction, or the heats of a reaction, using bond dissociation energies and Hess's law. So, first of all, bond dissociation energy, we generally know as BDE, this is the energy required to break a chemical bond. Now, as we discussed earlier, breaking chemical bonds is an endothermic process. So that means the bond dissociation energy is always a positive value. Now, since the bond dissociation energy is always a positive value, this might seem a little tricky because the enthalpy change of a reaction can be positive or negative. And what's actually convenient is the amount of energy required to break a bond is actually the same amount of energy that is released when that bond is formed. So using that information, we can just use the bond dissociation energy to calculate the amount of energy required to break bonds and form bonds in a chemical reaction to calculate the heat of reaction. So here's the equation we can use. You would calculate the enthalpy change or heat of reaction by adding up the bond dissociation energies of all the bonds that you're breaking, right? This requires energy, so it should be a positive value. And you're gonna subtract the bond dissociation energies of all the bonds that you're forming. Forming bonds releases energy, so this should be a negative value that we're subtracting these bond dissociation energies. So to see how this works, we have an example question here, which is, what is the standard heat of reaction for the following reaction? And we have a similar reaction to what we did for the heat of formation. So two molecules of hydrogen plus a molecule of oxygen gives us two molecules of water. And again, you're not expected to have bond dissociation energy values memorized. So they want you to calculate the heat of reaction using bond dissociation energies. They have to give you a table of the relevant values. So here, if we want to use the equation, we have to add up the bond dissociation energies of all the bonds broken. It's usually helpful to start by identifying what are all the bonds being broken and how many of them are being broken. And the bonds that you're breaking are the bonds in the reactants. So hydrogen has a hydrogen-hydrogen single bond, and each molecule has one. But since we're using two molecules of hydrogen, that means we're going to be breaking two hydrogen-hydrogen single bonds. Our other reactant is oxygen. Oxygen is connected by an oxygen-oxygen double bond. And since there's only one molecule of oxygen, that means we are breaking one oxygen-oxygen double bond. Now, for our products, we need to subtract the bond dissociation energies of the bonds formed. The product is water. Water has oxygen-hydrogen bonds. Each molecule of water has two oxygen-hydrogen bonds. And since we are forming two molecules of water, that means we are forming a total of four oxygen-hydrogen bonds. But you want to be a little careful here. Make sure you're not just using one of these bonds per molecule. There are molecules where they have multiple bonds, and this is the bond dissociation energy per bond, not per molecule. So now that we've written out this expression, we can just plug in the numbers. So here, we'll have 2 times 436 plus 498 minus 4 times 497. All right, and then we can go ahead and do that. 2 times 436, that is going to give us 872 plus 498 minus 4 times 497. So 497 is close to 500, so uh, 4 times 500 give us 2,000, and we need to subtract 12 from that. So that will be 1988. And then we can go ahead and add these two values. So 872 plus 498, that's going to give us 138. 7, 0, and then we need to subtract 1988, 
which if we subtract this value, it's going to give us six negative, negative 618 kilojoules per mole. All right, a couple things. First of all, on the MCAT, you would probably just round the numbers. So you probably just use 430, 500, and 500, which simplifies the math a lot. The reason why I wanted to calculate the actual numerical value here of negative 618 kilojoules per mole is to remind you that when we were calculating the enthalpy change of this same reaction using heat of formation, we got a different numerical value, negative 572 kilojoules per mole. Now, negative 572 is pretty close to negative 618. It's the same order of magnitude, but it's still not the same value. And as it turns out, one of these calculations is less accurate than the other, and it's the bond dissociation energies. And that's because the strength of chemical bonds is not a set value. It actually depends on the chemical environment. So that means the strength of an oxygen-hydrogen bond is going to be different in different molecules. So the values reported in these tables are simply averaged values across many, many molecules. So this value of negative 618 kilojoules per mole is really just an approximation of what the enthalpy change of this reaction is. Now, the good thing for the MCAT is you don't have to worry about this because on the MCAT, negative 618 kilojoules per mole is just what you need to answer MCAT questions. So you don't need to do any more work than that. Okay. So this is how you calculate the enthalpy change using bond dissociation energy. Let's now look at how we can calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction using Hess's law. Hess's law states that the enthalpy change of a reaction is the same whether the reaction takes place in one step or multiple steps. This is essentially a consequence of the fact that enthalpy is a state function. It's path independent. And if your reaction takes place in one step, well, you just have the enthalpy change of that reaction. If your reaction takes place in multiple steps, you can get the enthalpy change of the overall reaction just by adding up the enthalpy changes of all the individual steps. Now, the way you'll generally see Hess's law questions in the MCAT is they'll give you a few equations in their enthalpy changes and ask you to calculate the enthalpy change of another reaction whose enthalpy change is not given. And what you generally have to do is figure out how to combine the different equations that you're given to get the final equation. Now, as you're mixing different equations around, there are a couple manipulations that you'll often do, which include flipping a reaction. So flipping a reaction is just reversing a reaction. So the reactants are now products and the products are now reactants. You have to make sure though that when you manipulate the equation, you also manipulate the enthalpy change in the same way. So if you flip a reaction, you need to flip the sign of the enthalpy change of that reaction. And that's because if the forward reaction is endothermic, the reverse reaction has to be exothermic. So it makes sense. Another thing you might do is multiply an equation by a constant. So if there aren't enough molecules, you might just double or triple the reaction. So just double the amount of reactants and double the amount of products. If you do that, you also have to multiply the enthalpy change by the same constant. And again, this makes sense because if one mole of a reactant gives you 100 joules of energy, then three moles of the reactant should give you 300 joules of the energy. Okay, so keep these in mind, and to better see how Hess's law works, we do have an example problem here. So the question is asking, what is the heat of reaction of this? Two carbons plus hydrogen gives C2H2. And the information you've been given is three reactions. And these three reactions, they do give you the enthalpy changes. So you have enthalpy change of the first, second, and the third reaction. All right, as I mentioned, the strategy here is to figure out how to combine these three reactions to get this reaction. 
And once you figure out how to put the reactions together, you need to do the correct manipulations of the enthalpy changes of each individual reaction and add them up to get the correct answer. So first of all, you should take a look at the reactions one at a time and determine if they're in the right direction or not and if you have the appropriate number of molecules. So if I take a look at this first reaction, C2H2 plus 5 half O2 plus CO2 plus water, well, what I'm looking for is molecules in the final equation. And in the final equation, there is C2H2 as a product. In reaction one, C2H2 is a reactant. That tells me that I need to flip reaction number one. If I flip reaction number one, then I will have C2H2 as a product. And here, I don't need to multiply this equation by a constant because I only need one molecule of C2H2 as a product. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this reaction. And if I flip the reaction, then I will have 2CO2 plus H2O gives me C2H2 plus 5 halves O2. And since I flipped the reaction, I have to flip the sign of the enthalpy change. So this reaction now has an enthalpy change of positive 1300 kilojoules per mole. Now I can look at the second reaction. C plus O2 gives me CO2. Similarly, I'm looking for which of these molecules is a reactant or product in the final equation. And here, carbon is a reactant in the final equation. So since they're both reactants, I don't need to flip the second reaction. However, in my final equation, there should be two carbon molecules. And here, I only have one. So what I need to do is I need to multiply my second equation by two. So multiply number two by two. So if I go ahead and do this, then I'm going to have 2C plus 2O2 gives 2CO2. And since I multiplied the equation by a constant, I'm going to multiply the enthalpy change by that same constant. So now this equation as written has an enthalpy change of negative 800 kilojoules per mole. It has been multiplied by two. So finally, I can look at react three. And if I look at reaction three, I can see that hydrogen H2 is a reactant. And as a reactant, I actually have the right amount. I have one molecule of hydrogen, and I want one molecule of hydrogen in the final equation. So here I'm not going to manipulate reaction number three. I'm just going to keep number three as is. So that means I'm going to just have the same reaction. H2 plus one half O2 gives me 2H2O, and since I didn't do anything to the reaction, the enthalpy change is going to be the same, still negative 300 kilojoules per mole. All right, so now that I have the equations manipulated properly, I should be able to just add up the enthalpy changes to get the correct answer but it's often good to check your work. So to check to make sure that if you add up these equations, it will give you this final reaction here. And you can do that by looking at your reaction and canceling out terms on both reactants and product sides. So here I can see for CO2, I have two molecules of CO2 on the left for reaction one and two molecules of CO2 on the product of reaction two. Those cancel out. For water, I have uh, over here, I actually left out a molecule of water. So over here, uh, I, this should be, the product should be H2O. And I can see that in reaction number one, I have water on the left, H2O. In reaction three, I have water on the right, so I can cancel those out. Then for reaction number one, I have the five halves oxygen. So that's two and a half molecules of oxygen. Two and a half molecules of oxygen on the right. I need to cross out two and a half oxygen on the left. Equation two has two oxygens, and equation three has half of an oxygen. So that's two and a half. So I cross those out correctly. And with all of those crossed out, if I look at what's left, 
uh, equation one has C2H2 as a product. Equation two has two carbons. And equation three has one hydrogen molecule. So I have 2C plus H2 gives me C2H2, which is the equation I'm expecting. So finally, to get the enthalpy change of this overall reaction, I simply have to add the enthalpy changes of these three reactions I just combined. So 1300 minus 800 minus 300 is going to give me an answer of positive 200 kilojoules per mole. Okay, and that's how you do a calculation with Hess's Law. And uh, in this situation, there were three reactions. You won't always have to work with three reactions on the exam. Sometimes it's only two equations that you have to work with to get the final equation. Okay, so now you know how to calculate the enthalpy change of a reaction or the heat of reaction using three approaches. Heat of formation, bond dissociation energies, and Hess's Law.